Hello and uh, welcome to the Qubit training uh, channel. As part of the Qubit uh, development um, uh, series, today we'll talk about uh, PHP and uh, Qubit. We'll uh, show you what uh, kind of support Qubit provides for um, uh, developing uh, programs in, uh, in PHP, how to install and uh, configure this uh, PHP uh, support, then we'll uh, run through some uh, simple uh, uh, demos. We'll show you in action PHP uh, programs connecting uh, and uh, fetching data from a Qubit uh, database. And then I'll also uh, uh, talk a bit about the specific of porting uh, PHP code from MySQL to Qubit. PHP uh, support for uh, Qubit is implemented for version 5.2 uh, uh, of PHP. We actually recommend you to use the latest uh, uh, version, uh, it's 5.13. Uh, As for Qubit, uh, uh, there is a support for PHP uh, in earlier uh, versions of Qubit. However, due to the latest um, uh, additions we, we made for the um, uh, PHP API in Qubit, we strongly recommend you to, to use the latest uh, version available uh, for the Qubit um, database. Now, where to get the, the PHP uh, uh, library? The, uh, the place to go uh, to get this library is uh, uh, the SourceForge uh, hosting, uh, hosting project. Uh, probably you'll be able to find the, the library also on the Qubit.org um, website or, or as part of other projects. However, uh, this is the, uh, the reference place where you can have access always to the uh, latest and uh, um, also to the stable uh, branches uh, in Kubernetes. I'm showing you right now in the repository where you can find uh, uh, the PHP uh, code, the PHP uh, API code. So um, under the folder contrib, uh, there are actually uh, all the uh, projects dedicated not only to PHP but to many other um, programming languages. And uh, here in the PHP folder, you will find uh, the source code for the uh, Qubit um, uh, API connector. You can always uh, 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 compile it uh, for yourself so you can have the latest uh, entries uh, on, your, on your computer. If you prefer to uh, choose a stable version instead, then uh, all you have to do is to change the, the branch to the latest stable branch. Let's suppose now that uh, we have already the, the, the library here. Um, I have a Windows machine right here, so uh, it's a DLL uh, a file, a DLL library here. Uh, the next uh, step to do is to enable uh, the library to be uh, to be loaded uh, uh, via PHP, and uh, therefore we need to update the uh, any configuration file for our PHP installation. Here on my computer, I have a uh, uniform server uh, uh, distribution, which comes by default with a PHP uh, installation. So um, let's open PHP any and let's search for Qubit. And uh, here we are. As you can see, this is what uh, you need to do to enable the Qubit uh, PHP extension. And if you look, uh, um, you will also find a dedicated Qubit section where um, there is one entry. It's the error path uh, 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 the, for the messages. Now, if we take a look uh, under the folder extensions, this is uh, uh, exactly the, the library. It doesn't really matter uh, the name of the DLL as long as you specify the correct uh, name in the PHP uh, any file. Now let's uh, test uh, uh, and let's see if um, Qubit extension has been loaded. I have right here a small program which uh, uh, does a PHP info call. Now if Qubit was loaded successfully we should be able to see right here and yes. Here we are, we have the version and we have the error message file path uh, I mentioned before uh, specified in the PHP ini file. So we have, uh, uh, we have Kubernetes, we have PHP and we also have the connector 
the PHP connector for Kubernetes. Now it's time to uh, to run uh, a demo. Let's see a very simple uh, Kubernetes program um, in action. I have already prepared a couple of uh, uh, of test uh, file. Uh, let's just open uh, PHP demo one and take a look uh, in it before we uh, we execute it. Um, Probably you will uh, uh, you recognize um, uh, the calls. Uh, um, they are very similar with the MySQL calls. Uh, of course, instead of MySQL, we'll have the Kubernetes um, prefix. I'm connecting to the DemoDB uh, database. Then we are selecting all the records from the code uh, table. Uh, we execute this query. We fetch the records from the dataset, and then I'm I'm gonna close uh, this uh, connection. Uh, another thing you can notice right now is that um, there are, uh, of course, similarities with, with MySQL, but there are also some differences. Uh, for example, uh, when we connect to the database, the uh, port number for the broker where we want to connect is uh, specified as an explicit parameter. And here, instead of having MySQL uh, query, we uh, have Kubernetes uh, um, execute. This is uh, the program. Let's uh, let's run it. Here we are. And yes, uh, the program connected successfully to the DemoDB database uh, and uh, uh, fetch all the data in the in the code uh, table. As you can see, it's uh, it's pretty uh, straightforward. Now. Um, if you want to find uh, all the details about uh, uh, how to use uh, uh, the Kubernetes uh, API uh, library and uh, details about all the functionalities and, uh, and also uh, take a look at some already code um, uh, which was ported from MySQL uh, to Kubernetes, the place to go is of course the kubernetes.org um, web uh, site. In, in the second demo here, we'll, uh, uh, I'll just show you a program which was developed uh, in my SQL, and um, then we'll show how uh, how uh, we actually ported it uh, to Kubernetes. So the original program in my SQL uh, looked uh, like this. Again, it was connecting to to the demo DB uh, uh, database and um, uh, fetching the results uh, uh, from, this, from the nation uh, table here and displaying uh, these results. Now, um, when we uh, port uh, this program to run for Kubernetes, then uh, there are a couple of things we, we did. We changed uh, the function's name, we uh, specified uh, specific parameters for Kubernetes, um, I have uh, commented the, the line which selects the current uh, database in MySQL. That's because when you connect to Kubernetes, uh, you are always connected to a database. So the database is always uh, specified um, as a parameter to Kubernetes connect. And uh, otherwise, the code is, uh, is pretty much uh, the same. So let's um, execute the program. And here, uh, here it is. Uh, the program displayed all the records uh, in the nation uh, in the nation uh, table. Now, of course, uh, uh, it's very important, uh, especially if you intend to port core from MySQL to Kubernetes, to get uh, quite familiar with what uh, are the differences, uh, differences in function names, in parameters, uh, in, in uh, constants, and so on. Again, uh, take a look at the online uh, documentation. You'll find all this information available, or just take a look at the applications we have already ported uh, to run on Kubernetes. And also take a look at the, at the tutorials. That's uh, actually a tutorial talking about uh, uh, using PHP on uh, Linux. So uh, that's uh, that's it for this uh, uh, session. We hope you enjoyed, and we wish you um, to develop many applications.